Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug. I'd like to welcome you to another chemistry video. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and look around. I think you'll like what you see. And if you do, then consider subscribing. I would really appreciate that. And if you learned something from this video, please hit that like button. That would also be a wonderful way to help out the channel. Now in this video, we're talking about exceptions to the octet rule. Now in the last couple of videos, we've been learning about how to draw Lewis electron dot diagrams. And we noticed that in pretty much every molecule that we drew, the atoms are trying to get eight. Eight is a very stable number for the number of valence electrons in an atom. That's called an octet. And that's a very, very common conformation for these atoms to have as they make molecules. But you might remember that there was one notable exception to the octet rule in that video, and that was hydrogen. Hydrogen is not trying to get eight, it's stable with two. So I guess you could say hydrogen is one exception to the octet rule if you want to think about it that way. In this video though, we're going to talk about some other notable exceptions to the octet rule and how you can tell if a molecule is going to be an exception to the rule. We're going to jump right in here and take a look at this molecule, boron tribromide. And just like we did in the other video, we're going to arrange these so that the central atom, of course, is in the middle. That would be boron. And then we have the bromine atoms. We're going to arrange those around the boron. Now, bromine, if you look at the periodic table here, bromine has seven valence electrons. So I'm going to put seven dots around every bromine atom. And just like I did in that other video, I always like to start with the outside and then work my way in toward the middle. I find that that helps me to avoid mistakes and that usually makes these molecules a lot easier to draw as well. Next, we have the boron atom. And I look at where boron is on the periodic table. It's in group 13. So it's going to have three valence electrons. So I'm going to put three dots, one, two, three, around that boron atom. Now, once again, I'm going to ask myself the same question as I always have. Does everything have eight? And I look at this, and it looks like the bromine atoms have eight, so that's good. But the boron only has six. And so what might I want to do here? Well, I might want to drag some of these dots, maybe this pair from the outside of bromine, and drag those into the middle just like that, and give this a double bond. And that looks all very nice. Everything has eight now, and you might think, hey, that's a great Lewis electron dot diagram for this molecule. However, there is a little problem with this molecule, the way we have it drawn here. I don't think bromine can make a double bond. And why is that the case? Where am I getting that from? Well, let's think about this in terms of its electron configuration. So let's think back to that section about electrons and drawing electron configurations. We just said a moment ago that bromine right here has seven valence electrons. Now let's see where those electrons are. Okay, They're in the fourth electron shell. So I'm going to draw out the 4s and 4p orbitals in an orbital diagram. I only need to worry about the valence electrons because those are the only ones that are bonding here. So 4s2, so I'm going to put the two uh, dots there or the two electrons in the 4s sublevel, and then 4p5. And so I have 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5 are going to pair up with the others like that. So here is my electron configuration orbital diagram for the seven valence electrons in bromine. So according to this orbital notation here, how many electrons in bromine are looking for a partner? Do you see that it's only one? There's only one electron right there that's looking for a partner? Well, that tells me that bromine can only make one bond. Bromine, and as it turns out, all of the halogens are like this. They can only make single bonds. So guess what? This double bond that I just drew, you know, right here, is not going to work. And so guess what? That pair of electrons that I just moved, it's going to have to go back to where it came from, just like that. And so really, there is no way to make this molecule have an octet for every single atom. So guess what? Boron is just going to have to live with six. 
it's going to have to end up with 6. And so, as it turns out, the number of shared pairs here is 3. And the fact is that halogens only make single bonds with a central atom. And so, if you're drawing a Lewis electron dot diagram and you have the desire or the urge or it seems like you're going to need to put a double bond onto a halogen, don't do it because halogens don't make double bonds with a central atom. They only make single bonds. And so the finished Lewis electron dot diagram for boron tribromide is going to look like this. Boron ends up having six valence electrons. And so that is a notable exception to the octet rule. This happens a lot with boron, by the way, just as you uh, go through these. Now let's try another example. Let's try sulfur hexafluoride. And in this molecule, sulfur is going to be our central atom. And we have six fluorine atoms, and we're going to have to arrange them around the sulfur atom as, as best as we can here. And I'm going to start with the outside and work my way toward the middle. So for fluorine, we can look at the periodic table and see that it has seven valence electrons. And so seven dots for every one of these fluorine atoms. That's a lot of dots. That's 42 dots that I've just put up there. And next we have the sulfur atom. And we can look at the periodic table and see that sulfur has six valence electrons. So I'm going to try to pair up these dots as well as I can. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so the way I have this drawn here is I have eight valence electrons on all of the fluorine atoms, but how many does sulfur have? How many? Valence electrons are on sulfur. Well, if you start counting them up, you notice that it actually has 12. We have six shared pairs here. And you might say, well, hang on, how is that possible? Sulfur has more than eight. And as it turns out, that is just the way it's going to have to be. Because if you ever have a central atom being bonded to more than four other atoms, in this case we have six, that central atom is going to have to go beyond eight. That's the only way to make it work. So we call this an expanded octet. That means that this central atom has more than eight valence electrons. And so this happens fairly frequently in some of our molecules here that we have a central atom that has uh, 10, or in this case, 12 valence electrons. And this, this is going to happen with some of these nonmetals that are in the third period of the periodic table or beyond. So sulfur would certainly be a good candidate for that. So when you draw the finished Lewis electron dot diagram, it's going to look like this. You want to have your central atom, and we have the six single bonds there connecting to each of those fluorine atoms. So another notable exception when you have a central atom bonded to you know, five or more other atoms. Let's try one more example here. This is going to be xenon tetrafluoride. Now, as you look at this molecule, you, you might be wondering, is this even possible? Xenon is a noble gas. Can noble gases make compounds? Well, noble gases usually don't make compounds, but there are a few noble gas compounds out there. And this happens to be one of the, the main ones, as it turns out, xenon tetrafluoride. So we're going to put xenon in the middle. We're going to put the four fluorine atoms surrounding it, and we'll start to put dots in here. Now, fluorine, of course, is a halogen. It has seven valence electrons. So I'm going to put the seven dots around each of the fluorines, just like this. So that's a total of 28 dots. And next we have xenon. And xenon, just like we said, is a noble gas. And it has eight dots, so eight valence electrons. So we'll start assigning the dots there. We have one, two, three, four, and do you see a little problem here? We are out of room, aren't we? We still have to put five, six, seven, and eight up here, and we don't have any room. So what do we do? Do we throw our hands up in disgust and run away? Well, no, we can't do that. We're going to have to put these dots up here somewhere. So uh, where do we put them? I mean, you can't make double bonds. We just got done saying that Halogens can't make double bonds, and so where's the only other place they can go? Well, they're going to have to become unshared pairs on the central atom. So I'm going to have to put 5, 6, and 7, 8 right here as unshared pairs. 
So when I start looking at the shared pairs and unshared pairs, I have four shared pairs in this molecule that are going to make four single bonds. And then we have two unshared pairs on that atom. So when you look at this rule here, we can say that if you run out of room, just like we did here, you're going to have to place the extra electrons as unshared pairs on the central atom. And so this is another case of where we might have an expanded octet. In this case, xenon has a lot more than eight valence electrons, doesn't it? The fluorines all have eight, but the xenon has 12 in this case. So when you draw your finished Lewis electron dot diagram for xenon tetrafluoride, it's going to look like this. So xenon is another good example of an expanded octet. So these are the three cases, the three rules that you want to be on the lookout for. Remember, halogens can't make double bonds. Remember, if you have an atom bonded to more than four other atoms in a molecule, you're going to have an expanded octet. Remember, if you run out of room, when you're drawing a, a structure like this, you're going to have to put the extra electrons as unshared pairs on the central atom, another case of an expanded octet. These are the, are the three cases that you want to be on the lookout for that are exceptions to the octet rule. Hey, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, slam that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching chemistry for about 25 years or so, and I hope uh, you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.